Welcome to the video on how to figure out whether an acid is stronger than another acid. You have your list of seven strong acids, so those are strongest. But of all the weak acids, which one's stronger than another one? Now you could use your appendix D and just look up and find the Ka, and the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. But let's say that you don't have access to appendix D. You're in the middle of a test, and they don't give you this, but they, they give you two acids, and they ask you to, to tell them which one is stronger. So here are some rules of thumb about how to figure out who is going to be stronger. First, we're going to start with binary acids. What's a binary acid? That is just when you have hydrogen and one other molecule, uh, sorry, one other atom, uh, which could be uh, a fluorine, a chlorine, you know, anything, any element off the periodic table. We're just going to call it X. Keep this in mind. This star this. Okay? This is super important. You have to understand what is an acid and what makes a chemical be an acid and act like an acid. In order for a molecule to be an acid, what has to happen is, let me just erase this for a second, draw it a little better. Between the hydrogen and atom X are a pair of electrons that they're sharing. This is a covalent bond. And this electron uh, was donated from the hydrogen atom, and this one was donated from atom X. In order for this to be an acid, atom X has to steal the hydrogen electron away and then keep its own electron, thereby making this negative, because it now has an extra electron, depriving hydrogen of its electron, making it positive. So when that happens, you now have an acid because this is what makes a solution be an acid. So when we're going through what makes acid strong or weak, any situation that will make this more likely to happen will make the acid stronger. If you have an X where this is not quite so likely to happen, then the acid will be weaker. All right, so what can make the X be more likely to take the electron away from the hydrogen? Well, one option is if the electron, if the X is more electronegative, then it is more likely to take that electron, because that's the definition of electronegativity. That means that this element is more likely to take the shared electron away from this element, so it's unequal share. Uh, for example, if you have fluorine, fluorine is the most electronegative element out there. Fluorine is 4.0, hydrogen is only at 2.1. So that is a huge difference in electronegativity, and fluorine will be hogging that electron. Um, whereas if you compare that to just the next one down on the list, oxygen, okay, we know if you put hydrogen with oxygen, then uh, we can get that hydrogen to leave the support bonds. This is 2.1, but now it's 3.5. So less electronegative. It can still take away the electron, and so it can still be an acid. However, it's not going to be as strong. The other thing that has to happen is once, so two things. One, you have to take away the electron, and one, you have to leave it that way. If you have a situation where this is not stable and will then attract the hydrogen back to help it be stable, then it's not going to be an acid because it's only an acid when the hydrogen leaves. If you take your hydrogen back, you're not an acid. So what kinds of things can make X more stable? The bigger it is, the more stable it will be. So if you have fluorine, which is a very tiny atom, it starts off with nine proton, I'm sorry, nine electrons already. Once it takes that electron away from the hydrogen, it now has 10 electrons. So that is, percentage-wise, a really big jump in the number of electrons. You've just increased your number of electrons 10%. If you had, for example, further down that list, iodine, iodine has 53 electrons. Going from 53 electrons to 54 electrons, not so big a deal. So because it has more energy levels, it can spread that electron out. And so that negativity that it's getting from being that anion is not as much of an impact on that element. So let's talk about the periodic table as far as trends are concerned. I'm going to slide my periodic table here. It's got some other stuff on it. Don't worry about that. So the more electronegative the element is, the more likely it is to be able to pull the, the hydrogen's electron away. Electronegativity increases as you go left to right on the periodic table. So fluorine, more electronegative than oxygen, and nitrogen, and so on and so forth. 
And that's only for rows now. Okay, so anytime you're looking at two elements, you have to compare them, and they're in the same period, then it's all about the electronegativity. The one on the right will be the stronger acid. As you go down a column, it's not so much about electro electronegativity. The electronegativity decreases as you go down here, but what increases is size, and that increases a lot. So as you go down a column, you're actually going to increase um, element. You're going to increase acidity, uh, strength of the acid. So you hopefully know your stomach strong acids by now. These are three of them. Those are the three of the binary acids that are strong. Notice that fluorine's not on the list. Yes, it's electronegative, but fluorine, the fluoride ion, is not very stable. And so it will, well, let's get one shot right here. So when the fluorine takes the electron away from the hydrogen, it will go and make hydrogen and fluorine, but this is not very stable, so it'll take the hydrogen back, and therefore it will make the hydrofluoric acid again. So that is not um, a very strong acid. It's stronger than some other ones, but it's not a strong acid. Conversely, chlorine, when it takes the electron away, it doesn't take it back. So it stays like this. Because it stays like this and does not go back this way, it is a strong acid. So even though fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine, the size matters more. So when you're talking about two elements, you have to compare them on the test, two elements that are in the same family, the bigger one, the one lower down, is going to be the stronger acid. Okay. Those are the two things you need to know about binary acids. Now let's talk about these oxy acids. And oxy acid just means we're talking about something about a polyatomic. So we've got, for example, um, hydrogen with anything off the polyatomic ion chart, anything from acetate to cyanide and any, anything in between. You know, you can have a polyprotic acid, et cetera, et cetera. All these count as oxy acids, polyatomics. Most polyatomics, except for things like cyanide, have oxygens on them. And if you have two polyatomics that have the same central atoms but different numbers of oxygens, so let's say you had phosphoric acid and phosphorus acid. So the only thing different between these two is the number of oxygens. You can compare those. You can't compare two uh, polyatomic acids that have really nothing to do with each other as far as chemical formula is concerned. You can't compare those. So on the test, you'd only be asked to compare two that would have just this, everything the same except for the numbers of oxygen. Again, going back to the stability and the electronegativity, now those two things kind of fuse together. Oxygen is a fairly electronegative element. It's the second most electronegative element. The more oxygens you put on that central atom, the more electronegative the entire anion is going to be. And then the more oxygens you put on, the bigger it is, and so the more places it can spread out that negative charge. So if we take this family, hypochlorite, uh, chlorite, chlorate, and perchlorate, the difference is that we're adding one oxygen each time, and um, the acidity of these increases as we go left to right on that list. The Ka for hypochlorite, uh, or hypochlorous acid, is 3 times 10 to the negative 8. The Ka for chlorous acid is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 2. And hopefully you already know that these two guys are both strong acids. So, Weak acid, weak acid, strong acids, but this one's stronger than this one because it's got a bigger pH. Okay? So the more oxygens you add onto that, the stronger the acid. The last group of acids is called the carboxylic acids. Carboxylate, hopefully you know uh, from biology, carboxylic acids. This is a carboxyl group. We have a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to another oxygen, which has a hydrogen on the other end of it. This is the hydrogen that we're going to be losing. Now, the other side of that carbon is bonded to umpteen things. I have it bonded to another carbon, and then I put R here. R just means more stuff. It could be anything. It could be any kind of stuff. When you have a carboxylic acid, which is um, a major category of organic acids, if you take these other hydrogens, not the one you're losing, but the other hydrogens that you're not going to lose because it's bonded to a carbon that's not a bond, and you swap those out 
for other halogens. So let's say chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, you know the halogens. If you put other halogens there instead of the hydrogens, you've now increased the electronegativity of this, um, the anion, which you have left after you lose that hydrogen, and you increase the size of it. So that will make it a stronger acid. So these are all the basic factors that you can use non-mathematically to figure out if you're looking at two different um, acids, which one's going to be stronger than the other. Thank you.